In this video, we're talking about using prime factorization. This comes in very handy when we're given actual numbers inside the radical instead of just variables to an exponent. With prime factorization, we can find the product of primes. So when we multiply all the prime numbers together, we end up with the number we started with. To find a prime factorization, we divide by prime numbers. Here are a few prime numbers, just to refresh your memory. Two, three, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and the list goes on and on. Roots of numbers are difficult. So we find the prime factori factorization so that we can divide the exponent by the index. If we don't have those numbers, it's hard for us to determine what the exponent would be. So roots of numbers are difficult, but we can find the prime factorization so that we can divide the exponent by the index, just as we were doing with the variables. So this may seem a little bit odd, but let's, let me show you what I mean. Let's say we have an example one, seven hundred and fifty under a cube root. 750 is a large number, and it's not very intuitive as to what, what values could be taken out of the root or the radical. And so finding the prime factors of 750 help us a lot in determining what to do next. If we divide 750 by 2, we get 375. If we divide 375 by 3, we get 125. If we divide 125 by 5, we get 25, which is divisible by 5 again, and then we get 5 left over. Divide 5 by 5, and we get 1. So, We've just found all our prime factors. If we multiply these all together, we get 750. We could rewrite all these different prime numbers as exponents and put them under the cubed root. The cubed root of 750 is exactly the same as the cubed root of 2 times 3 times 5 to the third. We got rid of the 2 by putting it right here. We used the 3, putting it right there. And 5 times 5 times 5 is 5 to the third. Notice that we now have three different pieces that are kind of like the variables that we were working with before. We can now look at these as if they're variables themselves and think of them as having an exponent of 1, of 1, and of 3. Now we can do exactly what we were doing before by looking at the exponent, dividing it by the index, and pulling out the pieces that are found. 3 will not go into 1, and so 2 stays in. 
again, 3 will not go into 1 in 3 to the first, and so the 3 stays in. 3 will go into 3 one time, and so 5 to the first power comes out, because 3 will go into 3 one time. And a remainder of 5 to the 0 stays in, which again is just the same as 1, so we don't even need to write it there. So my final simplification for the cubed root of 750 is 5 times the cubed root of 6, because 2 times 3 is 6. On the other side, we have 250 x to the fourth y z to the fifth. Again, it's helpful to prime factor our 250 to determine what the prime factors are and rewrite them as exponents. We can divide 250 by 2 and get 125. Divide 125 by 5 and get 25. Divide that by 5 and get 5. And divide 5 by 5 and get 1. We can now rewrite this problem with 9 out front and the square root, or second, the index being a 2, square root of 2 times 5 to the third times x to the fourth times y to the first z to the fifth. Notice I took my fives and made it 5 to the third because there's fives multiplied three times, and 2 to the first. Now I take each piece separately and determine what will come out. 9 stays out front. 2 will not go into 1, so the 2 remains inside the square root. 2 will go into 3 one time. with a remainder of 1. 2 will go into 4 two times with a remainder of 0. 2 will not go into 1, so y remains in. 2 will go into 5 twice with the remainder of 1. At this point, we can multiply the values or numbers together outside the square root, and we get 45 x to the second, z to the second, times the square root, 2 times 5, which is 10, x to the zero, which we remember is 1, y to the first, z to the first. And this is my final answer.